Hi there. My name is Jacob Norris, and I'm currently a freelance environment artist working in games and films. You may also know me by the name of Pure Polygons. And today I wanted to talk to you about deltas, layers, sublayers, and the difference between the stage panel and the layers panel. Now, the best and easiest way to consider what a layer is inside of NVIDIA Omniverse is to think of it as a Photoshop layer. If you've used Photoshop before, essentially you stack layers of information on top of each other, either new information or adjustments to other information, and the priority of what is being shown is dependent upon which layers at the top and which layers at the bottom. Now, let's take a look here at the stage panel. This is what most people will be familiar with while working inside of the scene. You have your stage and it simply shows all of the assets, the lights, the X forms, uh, and any references you have in the scene. They'll all just be displayed here in the stage panel for you to search through, to grab, and to edit like normal. If you haven't used the layers panel, let's go ahead and hop over here real quick and start sorting this out. So at the top, we have what's called the root layer. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this reference layer that I have in here, because we'll bring that back in. I'll show you exactly what I did and what all this means. Now the, the root layer is essentially my entire project. It's the, the root of everything that will be placed inside of here. If I want to reference in a USD file, I can simply drag and drop that USD into my layer here and just put it on the root layer. And now it's been brought in as a sub layer is what it's called. You'll notice everything from the sub layer is showing up in my stage as it would normally. But nothing is actually in the main root layer of this file. I can check the eyeball on and off just like in Photoshop to make that layer visible or to hide that layer. Another way, if you want to bring a sub layer into the scene is to click this button here at the bottom called insert sub layer. And I can simply navigate to, let's say I want to bring another asset into here. I can go into the props and maybe grab like a calendar. And now this calendar is placed inside of the scene as a sub layer instead of simply being placed directly in here. Uh, you'll see it has its own root, its own looks folder, and you can tell it's not uh, directly inside of that main world folder as the rest of these are. Now I can edit and move around the files inside of this sub layer just as I would normally. And if we come back to the, to the layers panel here, you'll notice that all of those movements and changes I did are not actually applied to that calendar layer itself, but you see this little triangle on top of this X form. Uh, that means it's a delta. So now deltas are something else entirely. I can right click on a delta and delete it and you see the, the calendar has moved back to its original position from when I brought it into the scene. So what deltas are, are edits to locations, to transforms, to how many instances are in a scene without actually affecting the main USD itself. The reason we want to do something like this, if I had to go ahead and uh, delete this delta. Now, I can contain many different edits, many different deltas. I'll keep using that word so we don't get confused. I'll, I can contain many different deltas inside of a single uh, sublayer. So if I create a new sublayer here, and I just go to my projects, I'll have an entire USD here that will contain all of my deltas. This will be Delta Bonanza. It's just going to be a 
bonanza full of all kinds of different deltas. Now, it's important that this sublayer is above the calendar in order for that information to be uh, properly referenced and overriding what information is here in the USD file. That's because, like I mentioned, the layers on the top have the most power over layers underneath. I can show you that example right now as well. So I can edit any of the transform data of any of the layers underneath uh, this USD that I imported, this sublayer. So if I come in here and say I grab the slot machine, if I move it, you'll see it's still applying that change to the root layer, the world. The reason that is is because we have what's called authoring layers. Now I know there's quite a few different terms here that we're picking up all at once, but let's break it down one by one as we go through and you'll see how it works in a, a sense of you're actually working on a project, how you'd utilize this. I'm going to right click that edit, that change I just made with the Delta and delete the Delta. If, if I were to select this and not right click, and delete the delta. If I just were to select this and click delete itself, I'm actually going to delete all of the, the geometry, all of that data inside those USD files. So it's important that we right click on that delta and make sure that only that is deleted, not the actual files in the scene. In order to change your authoring layer, you simply double click on the sublayer that you now want to incorporate those deltas into. You can either double click on it or you can right click on a layer and set to authoring layer. So we're gonna set the delta bonanza layer to our authoring layer here. And now we can make a couple changes. I wanna select this whole slot machine and just move it inside this the scene. So I'm gonna select the root X form for that make sure that my authoring layer is on Delta Bonanza. And as I move it, you'll now see when we open up that sub layer and drop it down, that it has deltas contained inside of it. The only delta we see at the moment is the delta for moving that slot machine file. I can hide that sub layer and you'll see it's moved back to its original position. This is really useful so that say you want to have um, a camera set up in here, I can create a camera to render a specific angle of this slot machine. And maybe from this camera angle, I'd actually like to have the slot machine in a little bit of a different position to line up better with where those books are. So let me go ahead and select that delta for the movement of that slot machine here. And I'll drag and drop and move this around a bit um, to where I think it would be more interesting to have that slot machine in this image. And I kind of like this position a bit more. It's a bit closer to the books. It helps the composition more for what I'm trying to do. And maybe I want to even move this book over as well and get that just kind of in the background slightly for this camera shot. So now I didn't have to duplicate the slot machine. I didn't have to uh, create like a whole nother version of this scene in order to set this up specifically for this camera. I just created some deltas inside of here. Uh, I actually moved that book inside of the root layer. You can see this will happen sometimes and it's important. You need to be sure you're on the right authoring layer when you're moving things or else these deltas will start popping into uh, the wrong, the wrong sub layers that you don't want to be working in. So I'm going to activate this as my authoring layer again. If I want to remove this delta from the root layer and actually incorporate it into my Delta Bonanza scene, I can simply drag and drop it down into there and merge it into that USD. Now you see the book has been moved as well as the slot machine. Everything's in the right place and all of my deltas are properly set up inside of this authoring layer. If I 
go ahead and hide this authoring layer, you'll see the camera itself has even moved back to its original position as well as the slot machine. So if I come back into perspective mode here and I'm going to go up to my show hide icon and make this camera visible so we can see that movement. When I make this sub layer visible again, you see the camera moved over, the slot machine, the book, everything's in the new position for where I want that scene to be rendered. Now I can pop back into another one of those cameras that I wanted to render. You'll see that that sub layer has everything moved. So I can hide that sub layer and now I've got the beautiful camera angle I had set up originally. If you want to do this with the with a, a different camera again and move the scene around again, you can actually just continue to create those sub layers. And this will be Delta Bonanza, let's say like camera seven. Maybe I've already done this for six or seven other cameras in the scene. And I'll just select that authoring layer, move the camera where I want, reposition some of the things in the scene. Maybe I don't want this to be visible from this uh, scene. So I can actually come into here while that authoring layer is selected and hide this. And now it's only going to be hidden inside of that specific sub layer. You can even do things like, uh, like duplicating assets. And after I hit control D and move this around, I'll just adjust this kind of reposition it to something that looks more interesting for this. Maybe select a couple of these guys, duplicate those as well, and just get a lot more bolts in the scene because maybe I decided this person forgot how to put it together and there's a bunch more bolts lying around than there should be. Now, when I go ahead and hide that sub layer, the camera's moved back to the original position. All those bolts have been deleted and it's just great. Like you can, you can actually even, as I mentioned, yeah, duplicate assets, uh, move assets, move transforms. Everything will easily be overridden with these deltas inside of the scene and these sub layers. After I've made all the edits I want to say I've created a ton of different sub layers here and I'm no longer interested in having all of these things split up like this. I can right click and either merge down to merge just on top of a single Delta sub layer. So merge down once and now those have collapsed on top of each other. We only have a single Delta Bonanza file now and it contained all those edits, all those changes I made to the scene. If you're totally happy with everything now and you want to save this as its own USD with all those edits, I can simply right click and flatten all sub layers. And this just moves everything back into that root layer. All the changes I made are now collapsed down just like in Photoshop as if I'm saving this out as a JPEG file instead of a, a PSD. Let's go ahead and undo all that collapsing right there. You've seen now that deltas work really easily with transform data, uh, with duplicating instances, with moving things around in the scene, but you need to remember that this applies to literally anything that you want to change within the space. You can create deltas for that. So let me go ahead and select this delta bonanza scene again, and I'll come back into the slot machine here and find the Omni PBR material that's applied to it. After I have that Omni PBR selected, you'll want to make sure you're on the right authoring layer, of course. And if, if you're ever wanting to simply lock the other layers so that you are always authoring the correct layer, you can click these lock buttons right here. And this will force you to only be working in a single sub layer. That makes it a lot easier so you're not accidentally adding deltas to different sub layers that you don't want to be editing. So let's come back again now to that Omni PBR. And if we applied like a new color to the slot machine material, say we want to change the color of that, 
Maybe we even want to swap out the HDRI here for what's in the background for this dome light. I've changed it now to a nice park. So this person has an incredibly red slot machine in this beautiful park and it's all on those sub layers as deltas. I can now simply hide that and it'll revert all that information back to the nice office space, the nice colors, whatever it is I want here. So you can see taking this, taking this idea of sub layers and deltas and expanding that out to a full project, it just allows you to create an incredible variety of scenes, all with the same assets and all with a really low amount of space being taken up in those USD files because it's simply recording those edit data and the changes that you're making without actually storing any mesh data or USD or MDLs or files in it. It's simply those deltas, those changes. So go ahead, check that out for yourself and see what kind of interesting deltas and sub layers and connected assets you can create using this. I hope it helps. Thanks a lot.